Operating a business is tough and operating a family can be even tougher. So it stands to reason that running a family business is no easy task. Now working almost exclusively with family owned and operated enterprise, I get to see the good, the bad uh, and the downright ugly of family business. And there's a few hallmarks of a typical family business, including difficult family dynamics, uh, fuzzy corporate structure and just a general lack of focus and accountability. Now it's a well established fact that 90% of family businesses do not make it to the third generation. So how do you give your family business uh, the best chance at success? So here are the seven key factors to getting the best out of your family business and keeping it on track for sustainable growth. The first one is really simple. Run your business like a business. You can't run your family like a business uh, and you can't run your business like a family. For a business to operate effectively, it must have a proper corporate structure, organisational structure, chain of command, proper meetings, regular reporting and so on. So you don't have to lose the family spirit or values or enthusiasm, but you should run your family business like a business. And then to do that, you need to set some boundaries. There will always be some level of conflict in a family business. If you think otherwise, you either don't have a typical business or perhaps don't have a typical family. Problems and differences of opinion are inevitable. However, family problems should be left at home and business problems should remain at work. Conflating the two will magnify the issues on both fronts. Now, this doesn't mean you can't talk about business at home, but you need to have some boundaries and respect them. Because if business tensions are spilling into your family, it's a sign that something needs to change. Next up uh, is business succession. The humble succession plan uh, is mostly overlooked in family business, uh, perhaps until a crisis arises and one uh, is actually needed. Because a family business without a formal succession plan is asking for trouble, uh, particularly when there's more than one generation within that business and a succession plan will detail how the ownership and management of the business will be passed on uh, and is critical for avoiding conflict between generations. Uh, get people uh, in the right seats. So keep age, um, experience, family status out of the equation when filling the seats on your business bus. It needs to be a meritocracy. Just because Tony is the eldest son doesn't automatically make him first in line for general manager or sales manager uh, or whatever Tony thinks he's entitled to. It's easy when running a family business to put family members in particular positions to avoid conflict or fulfil some preconceived idea of seniority. But running the business as a meritocracy where every position is filled by the, best, uh, the person best able to perform the role will not only improve performance but keep uh, employee resentment to a minimum. Then next is communication. Regular meetings are critical to the overall success of any business but they are vital in airing differences and resolving disputes among family members. Clear and open communication is the key to solving small problems before they become large problems. So the discipline of a weekly meeting structure is a great help to the successful working of a family enterprise. Then there must be a clear and documented management structure. Family members often have a tendency to get involved and throw their weight around outside their area of direct responsibility. To avoid resentment from non-family employees, clear management lines must be drawn and adhered to. Any current or presumed future stake in the ownership of the business doesn't give any family member the right to overstep the boundaries of their position. So management and the chain of command must also apply to family members. It's probably okay if John ignores what Tony says at home, and that's just what brothers do. But at work, it needs to be different. Accountability must prevail. And then finally, get some advice and help from outside the family. So the management and decision making process in a family business can often be stale and dictated by the family dynamic. New ideas and creative thinking can often get stuck in the mud of difficult family relationships. But having external help and advice from an unbiased viewpoint can make a huge difference in keeping business momentum. And as an extension to that, including non-family board members or advisors can help bring objectivity 
and an extra degree of professionalism to your board and management meetings. So if you want to get the most out of your family business, identify the family business failings within it, then work to get rid of them. Dysfunctional family dynamics can easily outweigh the challenges in strategy and operations that are typical in normal businesses. And the way you handle the family part of your family business will help dictate your overall level of success.